Okay, you are recording. Okay, we will call our August meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission to order. Um, let's see, shall we start with the review of the meeting procedures? Yes. Uh, good evening. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and pursuant to Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, issued March 23rd, 2020, in accordance with Executive Order 2020-04, the Arts and Culture Commission is authorized to meet electronically without a quorum physically present in the same location. Please note that there is no location, uh, physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with emergency order number 12, we have taken action to provide public access to the meeting by telephone with potential additional access by video. Provide public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting and to provide a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. For this meeting, Microsoft Teams is being used as the communication platform. All members of the Arts and Culture Commission have the ability to communicate contemporaneously, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and participate in the meeting by visiting lebanonnh.gov live and clicking on the pertinent listed meeting. Instructions on how to attend are provided on the web page. To assist in the preparation of meeting minutes and to ensure all participants are aware of who is participating, all speakers are asked to identify themselves before beginning to speak. In order to ensure the best possible transmission of the current of the meeting content, it is suggested that you disable the camera on your chosen device to reduce the video feed and increase the available bandwidth for all attendees. To improve sound quality and reduce the amount of feedback in the system, please ensure your microphones are muted unless you are asking a question or making a comment. If anyone has a problem with access during the course of the meeting, please email planning at lebanonnh.gov. Staff will do its best to address the issues. In the event there are technical difficulties and we are unable to hold the meeting, it will be adjourned and rescheduled. All votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. The meeting will begin by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their name, please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under RSA 91A. And one last note, since we have someone participating by phone, to mute and unmute yourself, please use star six. And with that, I will turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, David. Um, I suppose we'll start. Do we need to start with our roll call? We need to start with our roll call. Yes. Uh, yes. Let's see. William Dunn? Uh, present alone with the exception of an 80 pound dog. <laughs> uh, ben Van Vliet? Present and alone. Nick Gaffney? Present and alone. Rob Welch? I'm here, but um, my wife is in the room, but I'm on the, on the headphones, so she doesn't hear anything that's going on. Thank you. Devin Wilkie? Will be present and alone. Joe Clifford. Joe Clifford present. I'm with somebody, but I have headphones in. <coughs> Karen Zook. Oh, sorry, I apparently don't know how to unmute myself. Um, I am here and alone. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Giordani, I'm present and alone. Um, and that is all of us this evening. We are absent Becky Foster and Sherry Fiore. Uh, so, shall we move along to our approval of minutes from the July 28, 2020 meeting? Um, do we have any comments, corrections? Bill. Uh, page two, line 28. Uh, removal of the first word for. It's talking about the location of the, the roundabouts and it uses the, the word for twice in the sentence. The first one needs to be removed. Thank you. At least the way I read it. <laughs> All right. Any other comments or corrections to the minutes? We have a motion to approve. So moved. Well done. So moved. Rob Welsh, second. All right. Shall we vote? <coughs> As 
vote yes, Ben? Yes. Devin? Will P votes yes. Nick? Uh, Nick Gaffney votes yes. Bill? Bill Dunn votes yes. Rob? Rob Welsh votes yes. Joe? Joe Clifford votes yes. Karen? Alex, Karen votes yes. Thank you. All right, so our minutes are approved. Um, let's see, so we'll just slide into our regularly stated business here. We've got a uh, discussion regarding the Friends of Arts and Culture Commission, um, which I don't think we have an update on. David, have you had any contact with Lauren? Or are we still? No. I, I, I had that thought of contacting her, um, but I haven't done it yet. So I will do that. Okay, thank you. Um, shall we move then to discussion of public art? The first thing on the agenda here is graffiti art in the skate park. Any conversations with Rec or what's happening? Do we know? I think we were supposed, this is Nick Gaffney calling. I think uh, there was a meeting that was trying to happen, but it didn't actually happen involving that. I, I know Devin sent an email out that some people responded to with, with dates and times to meet, but I don't know if it actually happened, so. Okay. This is Devin Wilkie. No, the as far as I know, the meeting did not happen. I only heard back from Nick and Becky on times, times to meet. And um, given that Red had had, um, at this point, five members of the commission, I wasn't sure who currently um, sits on that working group. Um, Jessica and Karen, you're the other two there, and I don't know if you're expecting to be part of that discussion. Um, but if not, we can, I can send another message and try to get the remaining members involved in planning our next steps. Okay, I think I think that sounds like a good idea, Devin. Thank you. Um, I think I sent out the email to kind of connect everyone after our last meeting just to get a group email going, but I I don't think I had the intention of being involved necessarily in the planning stages of that, but I'm happy to help if I can. Um, may I jump in on that? Yes. <clears throat> I saw some of the, this is David, <laughs> since I'm taking notes, I want to make sure I'm speaking. Um, I saw some of those emails go by and I noted that there were five members on that email, which is actually a quorum of the of the commission. So we should be we need to. It, Jessica, if you're not part of that working group, you mm -hmm. should probably not be on those emails going forward um, and just have the four who are on that coordinate among themselves and report back to the larger group. Yeah, I'll plan to remove, uh, this is Devin Wilkie, I'll plan to remove Jessica from the thread. And um, I don't know if the intention is to include Chrissy in that discussion or not, but I'll leave her on the email thread and have it be just the four of us that are within um, the under quorum count. David, what's the quorum number for us? Five. Five, okay. Yeah, Chrissy yeah, would be fine. Um, and you can copy me or not copy me. That's fine either way. Um, so thank you. Um, and Devin, this is, sorry, this is Karen. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, get back to your email. Also, the dogs are barking, so I'm going to mute myself again. <laughs> Okay, so we will just move forward with Devin coordinating that group to, to get things rolling. I think that Rec is ready and just waiting for the conversation to kind of move. So thank you. 
Um, the next thing we have on our list is the electric vehicle charging station. Is that still a go ahead? Because I got an email that it wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have still done. I, I chatted with Tad uh, initially before our last meeting, and then he had my number and he uh, liked giving me updates after that, which was wonderful. So he had called and he told me that it was at one point uh, dead in the water because how, how should I put this? He said highly a high priority of Energize New Hampshire, if that's the correct terminology, but uh, dead in the water because they were they were having difficulties with that particular slotted space um, due to negotiations with the railroad saying that there's still a right of way and they were not willing to give it up. So a day or two went by, he called me back and he said that um, there's a new solution or a potential new solution. The city also owns a similar number of parking spots close to the CCBA uh, uh, child's playground. So it would simply be moving further down the pathway, uh, which would ultimately connect uh, uh -huh. the rail, the Northern Rail to Trail uh -huh. to the uh, Mascoma Greenway. So last I chatted, and this was pushing a month ago, uh, the original concept had died because of negotiations. It was revived because of an alternative location and folks were excited about it again. That's, Good. once again, that's about a month old. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. David, were you going to say something as well? Uh, no, I think uh, I had heard that it was on pause for a moment, but hopefully Bill's information is more recent than mine. So I okay. like his response better. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. So I think that that means we're just kind of waiting for more information from Tab then. Since everything seems kind of in flux. Who was putting that in? Can I, I can I, someone remind me of that? I've forgotten now. I think it is Electrify America, oh, yeah. which is okay. associated with the Volkswagen uh, settlement. Right. Well, it's a great idea if we can get a space for it that everybody's happy with. That's wonderful. Okay, then I feel like we're just kind of continuing to barrel forward. Um, the downtown tunnel. Uh, do we have any new information since last meeting? I think we're still kind of in, like, waiting for construction. I, <clears throat> I have some information on that. Oh, beautiful. Um, there there was a meeting not too long ago with planning and rec and the city manager and public works uh, relative to the status of the project. They are shooting for a, they're now shooting for a May 2021 grand opening for the tunnel. Um, I asked if there was an option uh, for a soft opening. If, if work is substantially complete by the end of this fall, would it be, or, or during the winter, would it become available for use by pedestrians or bicyclists? And the answer was no, because I think, uh, according to Public Works, the contractor would like to maintain control of that space uh, until the project is essentially complete. And so the, the Arts and Culture Commission in particular has to should begin thinking about ideas for paintings or artwork in the tunnel maybe sculptures who's doing what um, we don't necessarily there's still no definitive budget per se um, although the planning department will have some funds that arts and culture could utilize if it's you know within reason so that is the task. So to, to start targeting a, a May 2021 grand opening event. I have a question for you, David. This is Rob. Would that mean that we could actually get artists into the tunnel before May or sometime after May would be the beginning? Well, I think we would. I, ideally, it would be before May so mm -hmm. that at least some work has been done 
for the grand opening. Um, again, I need to I need to confirm that soft opening option um, and understand what level of control the con contractor feels yeah. they need um, vis-a-vis having other organizations get in there and start doing doing things that are part of the project. Uh, this is Nick Gaffney. Um, I just begin on behalf of Ava Gallery uh, and Heidi Reynolds, Andrew Director. I know we're definitely interested in trying to be a part of the discussion uh, to help kind of find artists for that. Um, uh, and, and potentially even raising money to um, help pay for the art and pay for the artists who would be uh, working in there. Uh, I know there was a grant that Heidi had been looking at. I do not remember the name of the grant, but um, I, I think we might have missed the uh, the deadline for it for this year. But for next year, I think there's a similar one coming up. So Since we definitely like to be part. We, we definitely like to be part of that. If we were, if there was a way to get in there early to get some artists in there for some, you know, put out some requests for, for proposals for that kind of thing. Just Bill Dunn, I'd like to uh, maybe advocate for allowing maybe early entry so the artist can see what the space looks like but the only thing better than actually looking at art is watching, watching it being made it. right so I, th I think there's an opportunity there to have the grand opening be the public witness to the creation of the art that's going to adorn the tunnel in all forms whether that be sculpture music uh, visual arts uh, performing arts so i think it's a it, it can become a community event I like that idea very much, Bill. And actually, I've got a side. <laughs> My brain works crazy. So um, <laughs> you could even call it tunnel vision. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Tunnel vision. I like that. That is that is my update, if, unless there's other discussion. <laughs> That's valuable information. It's nice to have a date for the grand opening so we can start reverse planning. Um, and Nick, that's also fantastic that, um, that Eva is enthusiastic about sourcing artists and helping to fundraise. So thank you. Well, there's one more thought I had on this, and that is that if we have a grand opening, if we can get in there first off fully on May, say May 1st, um, it might be useful to have our grand opening three or four weeks later, maybe even into mid-June, so that artists can have a chance to actually get in there and do the art we want them to be able to present when once we're there at that point. Um, I don't know. It just seems to me that, that we should be a little bit flexible on that to give artists a chance to actually do something. So when we, we have our unveiling to the community, we've got art in there. Yeah, th this is Nick Gaffney. I, I agree. I, I think it would be good. It's really good to hear about the um, uh, the, the grand opening being in May, and it would be good to know if if it was possible for artists to get in before then to begin working on something, or if they really couldn't get in until after the grand opening. Yeah, I'll try to get that information for the next meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see, we've got the Mass Coma Mechanic High Street roundabout on our standing agenda items as well. Oh, Jessica, yeah. Jessica, this is Ben Van Late. Sorry, before we go to the next thing, can I just ask one other question about the tunnel is, which is that could we find out what kind of lighting and sound or electro, uh, electrical service got actually installed or implemented in the final plan? That's a good question. I will look into that as well. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts or questions about the panel? I'm sorry, I kind of kicked it forward there. Okay. Roundabouts. I know we talked at our last meeting about how there's plumbing and 
Rob brought up ideas about fountains. I know that there's also ideas about using the water connected there for some sort of like landscaping, if there are flowers or other plants in them. Do we have any change or update information about the roundabout project? I, I this is Nick Gaffney, I have a question. Um, because I think if memory serves last meeting, um, we're talking about kind of two things. We were talking about a long-term plan to put something there, a fountain fountain-based sculpture of some sort, when the actual roundabout is put in, which I don't think is for a few years. I can't remember the date for that. But then was there also talk of trying to put something there in the short term kind of yeah. on the existing kind of patch of, of grass and kind of I don't know, the island that, that is there right now. Am I, am I right in saying that? That was my understanding, Nick. This is Rob. Okay. Um, I think it, I have, this is Rob again. I definitely think we should do something to put something on the island once there is a a genuine island there and the, the roadway is finished. Um, I think it's a good space to use. I think it should be something that could be on the more temporary side so that if in three years would be sort of the earliest I see is feasible to have a, a fountain go in. But at three to five years from now, we have a fountain wanting to go in there. It can be taken down. Mm -hmm. I did in no I, way want to dismiss, did discourage people from using that space for art in the short short term by any means. I, I think this is Nick Afney. I think I might have said that I was going to be looking into get, finding someone who could potentially put something there for the short term, and I have not done that. Um, yeah, but I, I can continue to look into it, but I don't know if that's the kind of thing where we want to do it sort of on an informal basis if the work is going to be there for a while, if we want to actually have some sort of jury or, or request call for, request for proposals for that kind of thing. I also, I don't know because it's sort of a, it's like a traffic area, you know, it, it's an area where there's actual traffic that goes past if there are restrictions as to w what we can and can't put in that spot. I don't, I don't know what, what they are. Like we put an enormous piece of metal and maybe that's a, a hazard of some sort that we don't even know about yet. So it, be, it might be interesting to to know a little bit more about what we what what beyond kind of what we'd like to see there. What is the potential in terms of rules and regulations that we can put in there? Um, this is Jessica. I'm looking at our minutes from last month's meeting, the conversation about this, and um, we were looking at the funding the pro being programmed for the actual installment, like the completion of the project in 2022. And Nick, it appears that you asked about a budget for the installation and Bill mentioned the possibility of a temporary one, but from the notes, I can't see if we talk further about that. And I don't see it in the handbook okay. either. But I think that if we build, sure. Right. I, think, I think the concept was if they're gonna be doing work and creating the roundabout, then that creates a, a space that Heritage was eventually, or Fountain was eventually looking to place a fountain on. It's going to be plumbed and such. But if that's two or three years down the line, that that provides, in my mind, three years worth of opportunities for different artists to be showcased in that space. Yeah. So you know, rather than doing one installation for three years while awaiting a fountain, I think it's an opportunity to, to create a, an annual visual change in that location but Nick, to Nick's point I think we probably need to understand what are the what are the health and safety aspects associated with putting something Absolutely. in the middle of it although although it's a legitimate roundabout and it has a traffic pattern and nobody should be going straight through it I'm sure sight lines are still important and things along that line yeah yeah it, it can't be big sheets of of plywood right they go 10 feet high and 10 feet wide, yeah? We'll put up enormous mirrors. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That'll do it. Um, David, can we find out if there are restrictions um, or opportunities for use in those spaces before the final project would be installed? Like, I think the safety issue is relevant it's in the middle of the road. So do you know who yeah. that? I, I Right. I, I, I don't think anything that would, I mean, obviously that, that roundabout is confusing enough or that intersection is confusing enough. So anything that 
blocks sight lines would probably be not allowed. Anything mm-hmm. that somehow makes it more confusing would probably be discouraged. <laughs> but uh, I will find out. Yes. Thank you. There might be, there's Bill Dunn once again, there might be a, uh, a difference of opinion also between something that's stationary and something that's kinetic and, and moves around based on, yeah. uh, on wind flow. Mm-hmm. And one can always put arrows uh, on the island, you know, indicating traffic flow. I mean, there are ways of working against something, yeah. but you don't want to completely block off sight lines. Mm-hmm. This is Nick Afney. Everyone, I'm pretty excited to see the arrows that are there right now. I've always wanted them there, so. Okay, we have things to think about when we hear about what restrictions we may have to deal with because temporary pieces sound totally reasonable there. Um, okay, lots of comments about the roundabouts. Okay, I'm going to slide us right over into planning and goals for the remainder of 2020. Um, and I guess I will start by speaking to the um, winter celebration that we brought up last month. Which, which celebration was that, Jessica? Sorry, I didn't hear you. The winter ce- celebration. I, okay. The actual official name for it is escaping me, but the December event with the arts and the tree lighting. Um, I I talked to the rec department and they think it's lovely and great that we want to still be involved. And also December feels like a very long time from now, right at, at this moment with how quickly things are changing. So um, they have intention to be planning some version of the event, but none of that has started yet on this level. So I just made it clear to them that arts and culture is excited to be involved in some way if there is an event. This is Rob. I I want to encourage any kind of events we can have as long as we do it socially distanced and people wearing masks when appropriate. That's all I, I would be concerned about. Um, we don't know what Dartmouth is going to do with uh, its students coming back this fall, which will be in another two or three weeks. Um, and once they decide on that, we'll know what the COVID situation is going to be. If there are a lot of Dartmouth students coming back, I anticipate it's going to be uh, a big bump in our number a uh, number of cases up here. And then we have to be very, very careful about that. But I think we really do have to do this in a COVID relevant context. Does anyone else have anything to, to bring up or plans for the rest of the year? I know that Becky last month had had talks about doing things with the senior center. I can't speak to what. Um, she she has, and we've talked a little bit. Ava, this is Nick Afney. We've talked a little bit about trying to create a online art class for some of the seniors uh, in her, her organization. And uh, it's fallen a little bit behind um, on my part, but I'm trying to keep that kind of with every all the other scheduling I've been doing but I'm but I, but that's still in my mind to have something like that happen in addition to the current senior art things um, I wanted to actually ask everyone um, an additional question which is unrelated to the senior art um, because I feel like it's it's gonna come up at some point is the uh, the fountain covers yeah um, because that's kind of what Ava uh, kind of took took charge of last fall um, I've been talking a little bit with Carl Neubauer, who is the uh, instructor for Art Stop, which is the vast majority of the fountain covers were, were painted by fifth and sixth graders in the Art Stop program. Um, just to give you all a little bit of background, um, anything can change, obviously, but as of now, Ava's decided to not really hold any uh, youth in person classes until. I, I think it would be the very last week of September, maybe October 1st. Uh, I don't precisely know when that'll be happening. 
Um, we might be marketing some classes that, but they won't begin until then. And we're taking a little bit of a wait and see approach in terms of how the school year begins. Um, so, um, and when we do have those classes, they will be limited to six students. That is our plan right now. Um, you know, when we did our stuff last year, I think they were at 15. Um, so it would be different in terms of just sort of the amount of people who we, we would have to actually be painting them and how it would actually work. If we were even doing art stuff, what it, what it would look like. These are all kind of discussions we've been having. Um, we definitely would like to try to do something. Um, we're also a little concerned because the place where we painted the panels last year, we sort of decided it was in the basement of Ava and we've kind of made a decision that's not really appropriate for as a classroom space. So it's not really the most appropriate place uh, to paint the fountain covers. Um, and we don't have another great space that is enclosed and this, they can stay kind of protected from the elements while they're being painted. And one thing I was gonna ask is, can anyone think, or I don't know if maybe some, this is a question that people can think about for next meeting. Are, are there other places in Lebanon that the fountain covers could potentially go and be painted on but also be protected from the elements. Wouldn't necessarily need to be completely inside. It might be good if it was sort of like a protected area, like a. I, I, I'm not sure, but but we're trying to. I'm trying to brainstorm kind of ways that we could still do this, even if we had like six kids kind of working socially distantly, but still kind of in in shifts in different ways, but still try to get something done because we would like to do it. We're just trying to figure out the best way of getting it, getting it done. It would also, I, sorry, this is Karen. Um, I think it would also be entirely reasonable if they just didn't get repainted this year. Um, uh -huh. They were, I think, in pretty good shape. Like, if it just logistically doesn't work, they will still be very exciting to see again <laughs> when they go sure. back out. Sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, we could maybe think about if there's somewhere Nick, undercover, this is, but outside. How, how much room do you think you need? Well, you know, they're they're big. We don't need to put them all into the same space at the same time, but it, it, I I don't know. I I mean, what are they? 20 feet high, 15 feet high, something like that. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm forgetting the dimensions. They're bigger than you think they are, I think. Yep. Um uh and I, I I assume they're I don't know where they are right now. I assume they're um somewhere on so somewhere on the property of Lebanon, New Hampshire, I guess. Um but uh <laughs> Aren't they know, went up with the depot up at um, Public Works? Oh yeah, that's 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 right. Yeah, um, I haven't seen them there, but I I kind of have a feeling that's where they would have been taken. Yeah. So I I you know I'd have to measure them. I I don't know precisely how big, but think think bigger than smaller if that makes sense. And it wouldn't necessarily need to be a place where is completely enclosed in some ways it would be nice to have sort of an open air place but where if you were painting and it was raining you wouldn't we had an issue last year where we we did try to keep them outside and paint and then they got rained on and we had to repaint them all because just paint doesn't do well when it, you know the wet paint doesn't do well when it's being rained on so yeah Bill Dunn, the one the site that comes to mind, and we'd have to have conversations with the folks over at the CCBA. But the pavilion in the back seemed it's a very tall uh, structure. It has a large roof line. Uh, folks would be able to socially distance. It's very close to uh, both the spot where they'll ultimately be installed and the spot if Ava is uh, being part of it, uh, where the where the supplies are coming from. So it could be a way of securing that at night as well. I had thought of that, and I, I'd be happy to route to them. Uh, I do know they have exercise classes under there, at least in the morning time. I've seen them have those things. I don't know what the, their plans are for the fall, but yeah, it's. I had thought about that. This is Devin Wilkie. Um, that had also popped into my mind. I know it's not ideal, but another possibility I had thought of was in um, West Lebanon, that pavilion by the skate park. Um, which is also open to the air and also somewhat spacious. I don't know what would be involved in clearing that out or getting them over there just to get them back over to Lebanon side of town. Um, but I wonder if yeah. that's an option if CCBA doesn't work. And also I wonder if, you know, I'm sure more supervision or something might be necessary, but 
something in or near the public works building itself. I remember that being a very spacious building, but um, if there is space and if the children aren't going too far, um, it could give them enough distance to not have to worry about. Well, Scott, I just thought about the, the, the Lebanon pool. There's a pavilion down there as well, actually, mm -hmm. uh, which that, that could be a possibility. Even even that, because I was just thinking the same thing, even that with like um, some of the, I'm trying to think how big that pavilion actually is, but there's also the sort of inside outside walk through from the mm -hmm. locker rooms area and yeah. maybe like the um, the market could loan a couple of pop-up tents or something too, just to give a little more space than I think it's like mm -hmm. the actual pavilion is maybe not huge, but yeah and then it could be left because like the the skate park would be an amazing space but maybe they couldn't be left out in the same way mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and the idea the pool is nice because it is fenced in so there'd be a little bit of safety there this is bill dunn just chiming in on two quick things the skate park's a, a really cool alternative because we're going to be doing an, uh, an exhibit there anyway right so it might help mm -hmm. promote art yeah. uh, Two, two occurrences within West Lebanon, which is something we're trying to do as well. Oh. Uh, if we're talking about pure safety and hidden, uh, we could also have conversations with the folks from the Lebanon Outing Club and maybe look at the back deck of the uh, store Ski Hill Lodge. Oh, I'm not, yeah. I'm not quite sure the, that it has the height, but it does have a good decking system and they could probably do one or two uh, at a time. Um, this is Rob. I've I don't do any art myself. I study art, um, but I'm happy to help out with if you need, because these are young people we're talking about. If you need other sort of monitors or chaperones or somebody just to hang out with the groups, particularly if you're scattering, scattering them around around town, I'd be happy to volunteer for that. <laughs> but I don't know anything about the art. I don't do art. I just write about art, you know. Thank you. Nick, just for my own education, are they are they flat on the ground as they're painted, or are they tilted up? I, I assume they're not uh, standing they're, they're, straight they're, up. They're, they're flat on the ground. Um, I, there might be a way of painting them up while they're upright, but I, I think you 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 run the risk of paint dripping and smear. You know what I mean? Kind of mm -hmm. like when, when it's still wet, it's just it's, it's a lot easier to do it than when it's flat on the ground. So that's that's what Carl did last last year. Okay. And I think that makes the most sense in terms of, so that's, that's one of the things that it takes a little while for them to dry. I think he kind of was moving them around in shifts, but. Okay. Well, that sounds like we have some good options for exploring possible ways to get the fountain covers painted again this season. And then if they don't work out, I think Karen's right. It makes sense that like, we have the artwork there and everyone was excited about it and loved it. So if it's too much of a logistical challenge, okay. send back up and to enjoy them for one additional season. This is built on one one more piece. If it, if part of the logistical aspect of the difficulty is because there are children involved in the supervision and the social distancing aspect, keep in mind that last year when we invited the children to do it, adults were a little some adults were a little bit <laughs> miffed that um, they didn't have an opportunity so there might be a different painting audience or a different painting uh, constituency that we could address if this if the children don't work out thank you bill that's a really good point in the captain thank you yeah i think that's um this is karen i had if it if um I have something else I wanted to bring up. <laughs> um, we had a chance, so we had a chance to go into the new city hall. Um, and you know, when you used to go in the city hall and you would go down the stairs and there was that like on the way down to the planning office, there were like the half flight down and then the half flight back up. So the half flight back up now, the stairs are still there. The landing is still there. It is now just a big blank wall that needs a mural and needs, I think, sculpture. Um, 
the guy from Reart suggested a sculpture of somebody paying their taxes. So I think we can do better than that. Um, but that's like obviously like way far off in in installation. But um, as as we're talking about doing calls for, I always want to say call for papers. Um, <laughs> doing call for proposals. Um, it might be worth, you know, if somebody has something that would be amazing, but couldn't go in the middle of the roundabout. Um, yeah. There is a big rectangle that needs something more inspiring than somebody paying their taxes. <laughs> this is uh, Nick Gaffney. Um, what is the time? Is there a timeline for the grand opening of the city hall? I'm sorry, I don't know that. So they were talking about... Uh, moving back in in november obviously that would not we would not have a thing there then um i think the the plan is sometime mid-november um david may know better actually than i do um, yeah the plan i think the move week is the week of november 9th and that we would reopen in that facility the week of november 16th your office has a really nice view. <laughs> My, yeah, I didn't get the corner office though, so that's somebody <laughs> else's. I'm in the I'm in the back corner. <sighs> Good enough. It's got two windows. That's that's more than I have before. That's right. <laughs> Where are you going to be, David? Um, the planning department will be in the space on the where the fifth floor meeting rooms were okay. previously. So my office will be. A portion of what was the West meeting room. Okay. Overlooking the uh, the building where Dutil's jewelry sure. is. So where are the meeting rooms going to be? They will be. There will be still one on that floor, uh, but the other two, council chambers, and I suppose something like the East meeting room will be down in the uh, where planning was on the in the lower level. Oh, okay. Level one. That was a very diplomatic way of avoiding saying the basement, which makes perfect sense for meetings that take place at well, night. We, you know, <laughs> we there, we were there long enough. We adopted it as our own, and yeah, <laughs> we never liked to call it the basement either. <laughs> Well, and I do think, too, I, I know at one point the manager had talked to us about um, having more just stuff on the walls, having, like, art on the walls in City Hall, and it all kind of felt a little, like, like before we gutted the inside of City Hall, maybe wasn't the time, but we should have that kind of project on our radar, too, for just getting, um, <laughs> there are more walls than there used to be in that building. So there's even more space to fill. Um, other other big municipal projects, I think, take priority, but just like in the backs of our minds. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see. So I think something else I wanted to bring up in the planning and goals for the remainder of 2020 is um, kind of dovetails us closer to our committee reports. But uh, last meeting we had planned uh, Ben and Bill and Joe and myself with Tommy to get together and talk about our vision for branding um, and culture. And I. <coughs> apologetic email to you all this evening uh, prior to the meeting that I hope that if you haven't seen you will um, as well as a doodle poll because my sad sad black hole of an email um, inbox did terrible things to your responses but hopefully we are more organized and we can well I will be more organized and we can meet later this week with my fingers crossed uh, but that was something that we wanted to address sooner than later um, on, in this calendar year. So hopefully that conversation will be happening soon and we'll have exciting things to bring to the group next month. So 
see Ben nodding at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, are there other things we want to talk about for planning and goals for the remainder of the year? Bill. So, so just going back to what Karen was chatting about, about being having open spaces within the new city hall and tailoring or dovetailing that to uh, Ben's desire to let the public know that these things are happening because of Arts and Culture Commission. I wonder if we could have conversations with the city about that half stair wall becoming dedicated arts and culture commission space. And then yeah. we could manage what is being played there on a uh, quarterly basis or what have you. And it's something that would be vibrant and ever changing. And it's it, it's uh, that there's a wall right there that could say brought to you by the Lebanon's Arts and Culture Commission, or however we choose the ultimate branding to be, but it, rather than a fixed panel or a, a a lovely mural that that never changes. I mean, it's just a, it would be a constant reminder to people going into City Hall, uh, the, the the residents of Lebanon in West Lebanon, that art is important, and there are various forms that it takes. And I think uh, if if there's a way to for this committee to take ownership of a certain fixed space within that building, uh, that, that's an opportunity. This is Ben Van Vliet. I, I agree with that. I think that's a, a fantastic idea. And uh, the rotating of art, I think, is really um, a great way to show its vitality. You know, the, 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 the greatest statue can start to feel stale if you've like, seen it every day for 10 years. Um, and um, there's, you know, it also helps us connect to the people living here and now and the artists living here and now. Um, so if something rotates quarterly or even every six <clears> months, <throat> I think that people will will sense that as they walk into the building and like, oh, what's here now? You know. And I think Ava Gallery has demonstrated that you can have art rotating all the time and it it just makes a vibrancy about it. I think that's a wonderful idea. Have it have it up for three months or six months, whatever. I think that's great. This is Nick Gaffney. I, I would um, concur with everything that everyone just said. Um, I, I, I would say that um, there, there should be in the process of this kind of a thought in terms of budgeting or whether it's budgeting time or budgeting money. But if, if, if we, we do really want there to be a rotation thing. There needs to be someone who's responsible who's responsible for, for making that happen, because it's 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 the kind of thing where if you want heart, art hung well on a wall, it does take a little bit of time and a little bit of energy to do. It doesn't take forever, and you know you can get different people to do that. But it's it's the kind of thing that that there needs to be, and I, I don't know how how that would be if every every member of the Arts and Culture Commission would, would take t take every one one every three months and kind of hang work on the walls or some other thing that there should there should be some kind of process for thinking about the 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 person hours going into that. Thank you, Nick. That's a good point. David, this is Rob again. Uh, what time what is the date that you're gonna all be moving back in? Uh, the plan is mid-November. Mid-November, okay. I Because I think what I'd like to do with Heritage is get a piece of space somewhere in the building that we could have some some visibility for Heritage projects going in there as well. It seems to me now that we've got the new space. Uh, okay. Oh, I wanted to, this is Rob again. I just wanted to update everybody. We did get our grant. It has been signed off by council and, and governor, governor and council, I guess they call it. And uh, we have just this week, uh, in we've reviewed the four proposals for people who've offered to be our consultant to do a rehab, a, a look over the historic district and update all the all the forms for all the all the properties in the historic district. And the second year, we'll be thinking about expanding the historic district, and um, we haven't gotten very far on that, but that's one of the issues. And we have chosen our consultant. It was uh, Lisa Pespasian who did 
She did a project for on Ma on South Maple Street in West Lebanon, also our Crafts Avenue project, and she did our citywide survey. Um, so she'll be working with us again. So um, we will. We do plan to have uh, have discussion from time to time about where we're going with uh, with this grant over the next year. Great. Thanks for the update, Rob. Um, all right. Do we have anything else that we want to cover in planning and goals? Nothing you want to jump to it. Um, I'm going to move us along to committee reports, which also may or may not be things. Are have did any committees meet in the last month? Feel like a no, maybe. I see lots of head shaking. Um, I do want to uh, mention briefly, just for purposes of the agenda. I'm not sure if um, Katrina is still a member of the data collection committee. I ran into her at the farmers market recently, and it appears that she may be moving um, oh. for a job on the west coast. I think so. I could when to tell them one way or the other, but that is potentially an update about her status of involvement. Well, one thing about the committee reports, this is Rob again. One thing about the committee reports, I think the exploratory funding and processing and also the data collection um, subcommittees, um, they really do require some goal in mind for either one of these to be really able to work effectively. And that goal has to come from the commission as a whole, that we need this kind of data or we want this kind of funding for this kind of project or something like that. And then we can explore areas to go forward with on that. Right, it's not problematic that there isn't a committee report right now. Yeah. Uh, especially considering that we are trying to navigate how to be active in a particularly challenging environment. So that's fine, but it's important that they stay on the agenda and we ask. Sure, the absolutely. Opportunity to, to meet and discuss things. Uh, absolutely, I didn't mean to suggest they shouldn't be there, but the those two committee uh, subcommittees really do require a charge. Once we have a charge, then it's easy to go ahead and go forward with either one of them, it seems to me. And I think you've been doing that with the civic art and the programming and uh, I would think publicity and marketing will be useful when we have something to pu publicize or market. So I think they're all in that category, but just a thought, you know. Thank you. Um, okay, so open discussion. I know we've brought up a number of things, but are there things that people brought to the meeting tonight that they wanted to raise here? Jessica, this is David. I have an item on behalf of Sherry yes. Fiore. When she let me know that she wasn't able to attend tonight, she let me know that Tuesdays are not great for her. Mm -hmm. And she wondered if there was um, any willingness on the part of the rest of the commission to reconsider dates and times uh, of meetings during the course of any given month. I suppose that's something we can talk about. Yeah, I think it would probably take some granular doodle polling for us because I think that people are have, have robust schedules, we'll say. But sure, that's something we can look at. Absolutely. Would you like me to work on that granular doodle polling? Uh, you are a gift to us all, David. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I will assign it to someone probably, but yes, we can. That's do that. your gift, David. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Before we break, I just want to say it's nice to see everybody and see everybody's healthy, and um, let's hope we all stay that way. You're here. 
does that mean that someone is preparing to make a motion to adjourn? Well, that would be me. I'm Rob and I will make the motion to adjourn. All right, do we have a second? Uh, the blue book will second. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Bill, would you like to begin the roll call vote to adjourn? Bill Dunn votes yes. Devin. Devin Wilkie votes yes. Rob. Rob votes yes. Joe. Joe votes yes. Ben. Ben Van Vliet votes yes. Nick. Nick Cafe votes yes. Karen. Karen votes yes. Jessica votes yes. Thank you all so much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good night.